morning, Finley River. Hope everybody's doing well. Just want you to know I'm glad that you're joining me uh, this morning or this afternoon, whichever it may be that you're watching this. Uh, I am thankful that God has given us this opportunity. You know, uh, this is a little bit different format in doing this because I don't actually get to talk to you in person. I don't get to see your facial expressions when I, when I, when I talk to you and say certain things. And it, it's a lot different me preaching. And, and I know that. And uh, I'm hoping that this is getting better because I'm getting a little more comfortable doing this. Uh, where when I first began doing this, when I first started talking to you guys, it was just way out of my element. So, but we are in First Thessalonians chapter two. Today we're going to cover verse thirteen through seventeen. Uh, yesterday we did three verses. This this uh, this chapter seems to be segmented or paragraphed out a little more so than what we've dealt with in some of the other uh, daily ride episodes. Or, where we've got we've covered whole chapters you know but today we're gonna we're gonna go from verse 13 to verse 17 uh actually to verse 16 verse 17 will begin the next paragraph section and we'll finish the chapter out tomorrow uh today's wednesday uh we got actually today is Wednesday, but I'm because I'm recording it Wednesday. Today is Thursday, as far as as the daily ride is concerned. So we got today and tomorrow, um, and then we'll be Saturday, uh, off until until Monday because we're only doing this Monday through Friday, uh, unless the Lord changes it. So uh, I hope you really hope you guys are enjoying this, and I hope you guys will start sharing uh, this so that other people can can see what God's doing and. And, and learn from this. And, and again, I know it's a little bit different element than what you get when you see me preaching uh, at church, but I want this to be a time where it's it's almost as if I, I'm coming into your living room or coming into your office or your kitchen or wherever you're sitting now watching this or sitting out on the front porch with you. And um, I, I may start just bringing a cup of coffee with me and sitting right here, and you and I have a cup of coffee together, and, and, and it's a more intimate time, and I hope we get to share and learn learn some things together. Uh, I've been through seminary. I've got a doctorate, uh, but I still still am learning and, uh, and excited to learn more about Jesus and, and, and God and the Holy Spirit and their functions in our, in our lives. So let's just dive right in. Uh, verse 13 says, for this reason, we also thank God uh, without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as, as it is in the truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. The thing is, is that the Bible talks about the, the, the scripture being living uh, the Word of God is a living, breathing uh, element in our life. Jesus is the Word. The Holy Spirit reveals the Word, shows the Word, teaches the Word, gives us the Word, and, and it's a it's a living thing. So when we speak this stuff into our life, it, words are so powerful, but God's Word is even more powerful, if that makes any sense. We can speak something. Uh, if I have a friend and this friend uh, has something going on in his life, and I start telling him, well, you, you know, you're not going to amount to anything, stuff like this. These words impact his life. And I'm speaking negativity, or ne I'm speaking negative things into his life, and when negative stuff gets said, negativity breeds, and it breeds more negativity. So we speak positive things, it breeds positive positivity, and into people's lives. So this is what this is talking about here is that it effectively works in you. If you'll use God's word and talk and spend time in God's word, uh, we'll find, we'll find that it'll, it'll start changing us and we'll start doing things differently. We'll start talking differently, uh, than we used to. Uh, we'll start, uh, responding, uh, where we were reacting and we'll start spending a little more time think in our thought process before we, we uh, jump to uh, whatever it is. Uh, 
in making a decision. So in verse 14 says, For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God, which are in Judea in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen, just as they did from the Judeans. He's saying basically what happened is you guys believed what uh, what we told you. You accepted Jesus and you chose to be a follower of him. And there was people on the outside that were looking in, seeing what was going on, and they were giving them a hard time and grief about what they had chose to do. The same way the thing was going on uh, in the church at Jerusalem, the same thing in Ephesus, the same thing in Philippi and Colossae. These people were accepting Jesus, but people outside were giving them grief. And that's the same thing that's going on in our country today. We choose to follow Jesus, and we're getting ridiculed and, and put down and trying to tell, they're, they're trying to tell us we can't have church uh, and, and things like that, which Jesus said would happen. Because they hate they hate us, but they hated him first. So uh, in verse fifteen, uh, who killed both the Lord? Uh, talking about the Judeans, who killed both the Lord Jesus and his own prophets, and persecuted us, and they did not please God, and are contrary to all men. So these these people, we've got this issue going on in, in our country today. We've got this issue going on in other countries. I, I read where China is is threatening people, telling them they need to quit believing in Jesus and, and believe in the government. Uh, they're shutting churches down, tearing buildings down, and they, they're, they're, kill, they're, they're putting people in prison. I don't know that they're killing them just yet, but they're putting people in prison because they're having home churches or choosing to, to have a church. And so verse 16 says, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they may be saved. So also... Uh, uh, so all as always to fill up the measure of their sins, but wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. The thing is, God's going to take care of it. We don't need to worry about fighting these battles. The Bible tells us in, Ephes in Ephesians, and at some point we'll probably get into the book of Ephesians. I know the ladies, uh, or Jennifer is doing her little uh, uh, prayer on the porch that she does. She's doing going through the book of Ephesians. But I know in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, it gives us the armor of God. But it doesn't tell us to do anything. It tells us after we put on the armor of God, we just stand. God says in the Old Testament that he would fight our battles for us. And what better person to fight your battle for you than God himself? We don't worry about the negative stuff going on. We don't worry about what people may be saying. We don't worry about this person if they're ridiculing us because of the cross, this is exactly what's going to happen to those is that we keep focusing on Jesus. We're going to see good things happen and God will take care of, or we either we he'll weed them out. He'll move them on or he'll, he'll bring them around to where uh, our influence will, will cause them to come to know Jesus. So it's my prayer that each one of you can walk in boldness today and this be an encouragement to you that even though we have a world out there that's got chaos in it, there's still hope and there's still love found in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you and let's get and we'll get about our day. I will see you uh, tomorrow morning and tomorrow morning is Friday and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your many blessings. I praise you, exalt you. I thank you for this day. Help us to be more like Jesus. Help us to have opportunity, help, help us to step into the opportunities that you present us with, that we can be a minister of the gospel of grace. We love you. We need you. We, we need your touch today. And it's, we're nothing without you. And it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. And I hope you'll keep following me here on, on the day to ride. Again, share, share these videos so that other people can, can hear the good news of God, God's love for them. God loves you. I love you, and I hope you'll keep riding.